Hello, I'm Boss Jedi Zohan, and I'm going to show you how to properly benchmark your PC. Now, this isn't the end all be all of benchmarks, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of how to benchmark your system properly and get consistent results regardless of your hardware. So, I use Unigen Valley. Now, a lot of people complain that pre canned benchmarks aren't ideal because they don't really test your system in a real world environment because it's just running you know, these really sort of well-optimized scenes on your computer, and it's not really testing the extremes or the low end of your performance caps. The thing is, you really just want consistent results. That's all you really want out of a benchmark. You don't need it to crush your system like Heaven does, which is also made by Unigen. Heaven will give you a great idea of how games like Crisis 3 set to Ultra with everything turned on are going to destroy your system, but they're not going to tell you how a game like CSGO is going to run on your system. Whereas with Valley, you get a really good idea of what the medium to high end gaming performance is going to be on a wide variety of systems, and a much wider variety than Heaven will, because Heaven's going to absolutely destroy anything less than, say, a GTX 770. So, with that said, how do we do our benchmarks properly? with Valley. The first thing you have to keep in mind is that if your GPU or CPU are being thermally limited, uh, you know, the load that you're putting on them running the benchmark is causing them to hit a temperature that stops them from increasing their performance or minimizes their performance levels, you have to get rid of that. And the best way to do it with GPUs is to find a GPU uh, overclocking utility like EVGA's Precision X and set a custom fan curve. Now the way you can tell whether or not your GPU is being thermally throttled or throttled by a lack of power which would require you to buy a better power supply is using GPU-Z and when you have uh, Valley running in the background it'll still run at a pretty high load and it'll give you an idea of the performance cap and it'll say performance cap reason and then it'll say operations which is what it's saying right now which is what you want it could also say thermal, power, and a bunch of other things. So you want operations to be limited because that means that thermals aren't getting in the way, memory bandwidth isn't getting in the way, which means that the game you're running isn't drawing more or requiring more memory than your GPU has on board, etc. So operations good, thermal, and other bad. You want to eliminate those. And so you would go if you were thermal throttling, which is kind of what happens to my GPU if I don't set a custom fan curve. You set up a custom fan curve in your overclocking utility of choice and mine gradually goes up to 100% and it keeps it under 70 degrees or around 70 degrees. Now 80 to 90 degrees is when most GPUs start being throttled uh, by their thermals and you want to avoid that completely so I just have it run at 70%. Don't be afraid of having your GPU's fan run at 100%. It's not going to break it, it's just going to make it louder. So. Now that we have thermal throttling out of the way, how do we actually run the benchmark? Well, you run it three to five times on your system. And you wanna run it in full screen, which I'll show you some video of it doing now, you know, running the benchmarks, etc. And once you've done it three to five times, you'll end up with uh, a few files. And I ran my benchmark three times. So these are the results from each of the three tests I did. This is test one, test two, and test three. You can see that my numbers are really consistent, which is good. And that's what you want. You want your numbers to be as consistent as possible because if they aren't, that means that something's going on with your system like thermal throttling or your hard drive isn't loading textures fast enough for the uh, benchmark uh, as the benchmark requires it to, etc. And so the more consistent your results, the better. So once you've run the benchmark and you have the results, you want to open up your calculator and you want to average all of the results. So you can do this for the average FPS, the minimum and the maximum FPS, whatever you want. I prefer to just do it for the average FPS because most benchmarks online, which is what we're going to compare the average of our tests to, are average FPS benchmarks. So open up the calculator and we'll just add all three of these together. So 31.8 plus 31.7. Thirty one point seven again. And that gives us ninety five point two. Now, obviously, your numbers are, go are going to be different. And if there's a huge disparity, again, make sure you're not being limited before you continue with the averaging process. So once we have all three of our average FPS numbers added together, we divide them by the number of times that we ran the benchmark, which in my case would be three. 
and that gives us the average FPS across all of our benchmarking. And this is the ideal number that we want to find out because all other benchmarks online apparently use average FPS as the litmus for how a GPU performs. So once you've found out the average of your benchmarking numbers, you can go over to a website like a non-text bench. And I'll leave a link to all of the stuff that I'm talking about in the description, but basically they have a wide variety of hardware that they've benchmarked. And for GPUs in 2014, they benchmarked them on Crisis 3 at high quality with FXAA 1080p. And my GPU in their benchmark gets 84.7 frames per second average. Now on my system at home running Valley, it gets 31.7 frames per second. So that's a difference of 52 frames per second, which means that on my system, Crisis is going to run awesome because there's a huge performance margin between Valley's benchmark and the actual game's benchmark. And the game's benchmark is much higher than my benchmark at home. And that's what you want. You want something where the FPS that the benchmark has for a given game is much higher, or at least a little bit higher than the benchmark you ran on your computer. And so if I had a card like the uh, 260X from AMD and they only get 30 FPS in Crisis 3, that means that in Valley, you're gonna get like 10 or 12 average FPS with that card, which means that it probably wouldn't be a good choice to buy. So essentially speaking, that's probably the most efficient and easiest way to benchmark your PC. If you'd like me to do more videos like this, let me know. I, I love doing stuff like this where I kind of go over the technical things uh, because I feel like there isn't enough information out there for people when it comes to doing things in a simple manner. You know, you can get overly technical and build yourself a test bench, but you really don't need to. You just need a few simple pieces of free software and some online information and boom, you have a very accurate picture of your PC's performance. Anyway, that's been my time. I'm Boss Jedi Zohan. If you like this video, please leave a like or a comment saying what you appreciated about it. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.